welcome back to Rational Table Tennis Analysis. In this video, we'll take a look at the recent Europe Top 16 Cup semi-final match, Darko Jokic against Dimitrich Ovcharov. We'll focus on each set and analyse what each player did well and not so well during the game. Towards the end of the video, I'll introduce some tactics that both players used during this match and explain how you can add these to your own game. So without further ado, let's get started. In set 1, Dima focuses on his backhand serves towards two placements on the table, the forehand shot and occasionally backhand long. Most of his serves to the forehand shot are topspin. As Darko pushes the ball, it will pop up and Dima can attack in the next shot. Dima is also very clever with his attacking placement, sometimes towards Darko's forehand and sometimes to his elbow position. For Darko, at the start of the game, he made quite a few unforced errors. He serves topspin pendulum to Dima's middle to backhand position. He waits for Dima's weak topspin return, then attacks to the wide corners in the third ball. Early in the game, we can already see that during the rallies and as the rally goes on, Darko has quite an advantage as he is more mobile and agile. In this set, Darko lost because of his surf returns and too many unforced errors. In the second set, Dima uses the same service tactic as the first set, serving to Darko's forehand shot. Darko is trying different ways but still struggling a bit to return. Most of his returns are either too high or he missed it straight away. And again, if he can stay in the rally for more than two shots, he has a higher possibility to win the rally. On the other hand, Darko's serving tactic is working really well. Serving pendulum topspin to Dima's middle, wait for Dima's weak open, and then a strong attack in the third ball with good placements to wide corners. At 8-9 down, when Dima seems to solve his return by doing slow topspin on the ball, Darko changes to a backhand serve. This sets him up for a great third ball attack. At 10-9 down, Darko goes for a banana flick for Dima's serve and takes Dima by surprise. Towards the end of the game, Darko continues with his backhand serve, but this time serving long with the same motion, which surprises Dima again. In this set, it is these changes in serve and return from Darko that win him the set. It shows how important it is to change things up a bit in crucial moments to confuse the opponent. In set 3, Dima serves more often to Darko's backhand long, forcing him to either step in for the forehand shot or step out. But already, Darko is more used to Dima's serves and makes less errors when returning. Darko tries to push deep in the return, wait for Dima's slow topspin loop and then counter attack. With Darko's backhand serve, Dima always tries to flick the ball. However, it is not easy because in this set, Darko serves very more between heavy backspin and topspin. Sometimes the ball kicks and sometimes it drops. Even when Dima flicks the ball, Darko is already ready to counter-attack in the next shot. Darko also makes good use of his shot placement, playing the ball to wide backhand and forehand corners. In set 4, right from the start, Dima has been very positive, always getting the first attack. Although he stays further back a bit from the table, this allows him to get the space to play a full stroke, increasing the spin and speed of the ball. He is also very clever about his placements, realising that Darko is better at backhand, so he attacks mostly to his elbow or forehand. For Darko, he is still using the same tactic, serving to Dima's backhand 
wait for weak attack and then counter attack. However, as Dima is playing more often to his forehand, he doesn't feel as comfortable counter attacking, so he makes quite a few unforced errors trying to counter topspin with his forehand in this set. In set 5, Dima reverts back to his serve tactic in set 1, back and serve to forehand shot. Darko tries to flick the ball at the start of the game, but it doesn't turn out well. He switches to using his forehand to push to Dima's middle. By doing this, Dima will have to move to attack the ball, which makes the attack weaker. For Darko, he is doing almost the same tactic as Dima, but his serves are longer, trying to make Dima to topspin his serve, and then he can counter topspin. Most of his serves are heavy backspin with occasional bouncy topspin, making it awkward for Dima to return. In set 6, Dima serves to Darko's backhand long at the start. This could be warning Darko not to step in even before he serves. As he serves back to forehand shot afterwards, quite a few of Darko's pushes are high for Dima to attack. And this tactic is successful in some way. However, most of Dima's attacks have been too focused on Darko's forehand, and there are many occasions where he's already waiting to counter attack on his forehand side. Alternatively, if Dima places the ball to Darko's elbow position, he's not as comfortable returning. In the juice in this set, Dima has quite a few chances to attack, but he chooses to attack Darko's forehand. If he actually attacks Darko's elbow position, I think he may have won the set. Another thing which is quite obvious is that Darko is getting a bigger and bigger advantage during the rally. Again, he's younger, more mobile and agile. Dima is already 34. He has suffered from a few injuries recently, so he's probably not in his best form. This is a very interesting match to watch, as both players are quite backhand orientated and they have similar serve tactics, so it is quite refreshing to see them dealing with their own tactics by playing against themselves. As I promised at the start of the video, I will talk about a few tactics in this match that you can take away and apply them into your game. First of all, the backhand serve into the opponent's forehand shot. Surf mostly topspin and occasionally heavy backspin. When the opponent pushes, the ball will pop up and then you can attack. The best placement here is the elbow position. As you have already seen, your opponent might be like Dago Jokic, waiting on either the back and the forehand side. Another tactic is the forehand pendulum kicker surf into the opponent's middle to backhand. Make sure your surf is low but has that bounce effect to make it difficult for the opponent to attack. When the opponent attacks, be ready in the backhand position to counter attack to wide corners. The next tactic is more general. When you're playing against someone who's way more mobile and moves faster than you, it is better to stay a bit further back from the table, just like what Dima did, giving yourself more time and space to finish your full stroke to really get good quality on your shots. This is the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed this type of match analysis video. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and share it amongst your friends. Also if you have any questions or suggestions on what videos to do next, feel free to comment below. I have lots of videos coming soon, so stay tuned, bye bye.